Hey there, welcome to Technability. I am Berge. We are your source for no-nonsense tech, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to check out www.technability.com. Follow, follow us on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, and all that good stuff. Okay, so I got a review here. We got a review here that's actually very exciting for me because I'm a big fan, of course, of CyanogenMod. If you've seen uh, our channel in the past, if you haven't watched it, uh, you can see a lot of our videos. We emphasize CyanogenMod as one of our favorite custom ROMs. Also, if you check out technability.com, we have a lot of great uh, CyanogenMod how-tos, installations, as well as comparisons with stock Android. Uh, so we, you know, personally, Technability believes that CyanogenMod is one of the better custom ROMs out there, if not quote unquote, arguably the best. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at CyanogenMod 11 here on a LG Optimus G for Sprint. So this is the LS970 model, and we are running CM11, which is KitKat 4.4.2. I'll just go ahead and go here to About Phone, show you guys this right here. Okay, 4.4.2 on the LG Optimus G. Now the LG Optimus G is, is a pretty solid phone. Uh, it's for Sprint, they also have it for AT&T. It's got its all uh, glass front, all glass back, a la the iPhone 4, 4S and the Nexus, Nexus 4. Uh, it's a, a very good phone in terms of its internal hardware. Software wise, that's where it gets a little bit you know, tricky because some people are fans of LG's overlay on top of Android, some aren't. But this out of the box comes with Android ICS. Now a lot of them have been updated to Jelly Bean, however, they will probably never see the light of day in terms of KitKat. So if you're looking for stock KitKat without all the bells and whistles of LG's overlay, then Signage and Mod 11 is the way to go for you. So we're gonna get started here real quick with the lock screen. I wanna show you guys the lock screen here with KitKat on the Optimus G. Now you can see it's a fairly simple lock screen, right? Really nothing too crazy or fancy about it. And just to compare it to the uh, Nexus 5 here, you can see that they're very similar, right? Both have the uh, same lock screen. So you got the lock screen shortcuts here, which you don't have on stock uh, KitKat. Okay, obviously you get features with signage and modern customizations that you're not gonna get with stock KitKat. And that's always been the issue with signage is that they've always put uh, a ton of customizations that you don't get with stock Android, which kind of uh, separates it from the pack. Now again, you can see the shortcuts here. These are customizable. You also have the lock screen widgets, camera access, notification bar access, quick settings panel, okay, as well as uh, should have access to Google now. But in any case, we can go ahead and unlock the phone here. All right, let's go ahead and get started by looking at the wallpapers and the widgets. Now you can see this is very similar, again, to the Nexus 4, uh, to the Nexus 5, which comes with stock KitKat out of the box. You get the same type of uh, layout here with the widgets, wallpapers, and settings. And we'll do an in-depth comparison with this and the Nexus 5 very shortly. But for now, let's go ahead and look at the Optimus G running this, uh, running the latest and greatest in Android. Now you can see the wallpapers here, signage and mods. These are all the same wallpapers that come with the Nexus 5. You do have more live wallpapers here than you do with the Nexus 5. So you can see you got Phase Beam, Nexus, Magic Smoke, Holo Spiral, etc. But the wallpapers in general are very high quality. That's one thing that I give uh, Android credit for in terms of KitKat is they've put some high quality wallpapers. You know, which um, you know sometimes in the past you didn't get these high quality wallpapers with Android phones. But now with KitKat, uh, they've actually uh, optimized it to be high quality. And this is a 720p display, so it's not a 1080p, but it still does render over 300 pixels per inch. Now you can also do this. Okay, Google, tell me the weather. Of course, it's not connected to a network right now, but you can see you do have the OK Google feature. Right, you have the various widgets here, which are all the stock Android widgets, uh, digital clock messaging, setting shortcuts, etc., etc. So I could just basically take the digital clock, for example, put it wherever I'd like. I can also resize it, of course. So you could resize the widget. It says you need to sign into your Google account, which clearly I haven't done. I literally just flashed this. And we will be doing a how-to on how to install CM11 on your LG Optimus G. It's a fairly simple process, especially if your phone is still running ICS on it. Rooting it and installing the ROM is a fairly simple process. Of course, like you can also create folders, which again has been a feature on Android since ICS. All right, easy to create the folders, name the folders. You're gonna get a little tutorial there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of here with the folder. Okay, so I'm, I apologize about the brightness issues here, and it's just the lighting in this room is not as uh, nice as I'd like it to be, but let's go ahead and actually just adjust that slightly ever bit. So this is a very bright screen. One thing that I have to say about the LG Optimus G, it's definitely got a gorgeous 720p display. All right, now you can see if you slide down from the right-hand side, you get the quick settings panel. Left-hand side, you get the notification bar. Now you can uh, customize this to just have the notification bar come down, and then two fingers will access the quick settings panel. You can also customize the quick settings panel in terms of the um, toggles that you put here. So you can have various different toggles here. You got the flashlight, which is torch. 
Okay, you can see that torch off. Um, one of the big things about Cyanogen is it's, is its customizations. I mean, if you just go to settings here, you could see lock screen, screen security, of course, which is you know slide to unlock, face unlock, etc. All right, or, or excuse me, you don't have face unlock, pattern slide, pin, none, password. If you go back here, you have delay screen. Uh, you have delay screen. Lock uh, delay, which is right there. You say it's, see it says delay screen lock, and then it gives you a certain amount of time that you'd like to delay it. Additional options: menu unlock, home unlock, vibrate. You got battery status only when charging, always on, always off. Button actions, which is cool. You know you can long press the back button and have it do a certain task. Your next song, previous song, so you can adjust that for music or for the flashlight. You got the camera widget, whether you want to remove that or leave that there. Okay, and you got themes, of course, which you could download from the Play Store. A flurry of Cyanogen Mod themes, which again, you know, for the most part, are free in the Play Store. You may have to pay a dollar or two for some of them. Now, this is where it gets really fun: is the the interface features. Okay, you can see you got status bar features. You got battery status style. So let's say I want. Um, Text. You can see now it's just text of the battery percentage. Brightness control. If you slide up across the status bar, you can adjust the brightness. Double tap to sleep. So no show notification count. Going back to quick settings panel, this is where you can basically customize the quick settings panel. All right, so you got tiles and layouts, sound mode, etc., etc. Notification drawer options, of course. Auto close behavior, show in drawer, expanded desktop. You can uh, enable that or disable that. Of course, you have all the sound options, display and lights. Or you can see pulse notification light, battery light enabled, buttons, which uh, you know you can see right there, power menu, home button, menu button, volume button, so many options, right? I mean, so many features. Tap and pay, which is an NFC thing. And of course, if you go down, you have all the other uh, Android KitKat features. If you go to about phone here, let's say you want to um, enable uh, developer options, just keep clicking on build, build number and you'll de uh, enable developer options in which you can adjust the animation speeds, how fast you want, uh, uh, apps to open and close, whether you want animations, you can disable them all together. And you can see the uh, app drawers, very simple, right? Okay, this is very basic gaps. I mean, it's actual full gaps that I've installed here. It's banks gaps. And it literally comes with nothing. And again, comparing it to the Nexus 4, or the Nexus, I keep saying Nexus 4, to the Nexus 5, the Nexus 5 does come with a ton of Google, well, not a ton, but a lot of Google services, which clearly over here uh, with the Optimus G with KitKat on it, it's a custom ROM, uh, you're gonna get the basics. Apollo, which is CM's music player. Browser, and it's not Chrome, but you could download Chrome. Messaging, again, it's not Hangouts, but you could download Hangouts from the Play Store. Okay, um, and you can see the keyboard here. Very easy to use, very easy to type on. I know I didn't spell that correctly in terms of U, but it's very responsive, much better than any overlay keyboard that you're gonna get with LG. Now you don't have the gestures because you don't have Hangouts here, but if you download Hangouts from the Play Store, you'll have all those cool features, including the gesture, the ability to gesture back from a message, etc. cetera. All right, you can see the gallery. It's the common, uh, simple KitKat gallery. Just say not now. All right, and you can obviously sync this with your Picasa and all your other social networks. Um, file manager, which is CM's file manager, basically what it is. Let's look at the camera here because the camera is really kind of, not really where it suffers, but one area where I know a lot of people are fans of LG's camera overlay. So with this, you're essentially gonna get stock Android's camera and you can see just simply taking pictures. Quality's not bad, I mean, it's still, uh, the camera that it comes with doesn't change in terms of its megapixel count. You have photo, sphere, panorama, uh, video camera as well. If you long press, you can just get to the front facing camera here. And I've said this plenty of times, but I do wish they, the stock Android had an option to just have these, you know, the front facing camera and a few of these other options up here in the form of like a navigation or a toggle. Makes it a lot easier. Sometimes when you long press, it doesn't respond. But you can see taking pictures fairly fast. You don't have bird shot or anything like that. And that's the simple interface with Android's uh, camera, but you do have the ability to download third party cameras. And you can see when you actually click on a picture, just swipe it up to delete it or swipe it down. Okay, go into the picture, you can see that you have editing options. Edit, and you can just click right here to edit it. Various different filters. You can see how the filters work. Obviously this isn't a good representation of the camera quality, but you can see how the filters work. You can click right here on menu, it says show applied effects, information reset, export, a reset, export, print. Okay, and crop it, save and exit. And of course you do have all the sharing options. You see it's saving picture to camera, Let's just go back. You do have all the sharing options, so third-party apps do sync with this, so you can have third-party apps, various apps sync with the sharing options right here. So you don't have to go into every individual app. Let's say you want to edit it through a various third-party editing app. It'll actually sync here with the sharing options, making it a lot easier for you 
uh, to edit that app. Now in terms of speed, you could just see this thing is blazing fast. And of course the way that screens uh, or, or adding screens here works on KitKat is you just basically drag an icon to the next screen and it'll create another screen for you. Okay, so if I want to take whatever, let's say this, or let's just say the camera icon. I want to drag it here, I've just created another screen. Now if you long press, you can adjust these screens and you can move them around. Okay, so if I want to adjust them and move them around, okay, you can go to settings from here, of course, which takes you to Google Now settings and Google search. Okay, Google. Okay, now, but just in terms of overall speed, um, it's super duper fast. I mean, you can see the uh, browser here again. It's not Chrome, but you could download Chrome. The tabs, you could just swipe them away. Add a tab, you got incognito mode. Uh, you should have a reader mode as well. So you could just close out of all of that right there. Okay, everything works perfectly fine in terms of its speed, in terms of its fluidity. This is super blazing fast. And that's one thing that Cyanogen has always prided itself on as being a very fast system. So if you're looking for speed, you have a need for speed, then this custom ROM is the way to go for you and your Optimus G. Now you can see all the other apps such as Calendar, very simple, minimal calendar, minimal um, minimal features. You know, that's the look and the theme that they've been going for for a while before anybody else did it. Um, and you, know, you got to give credit to Microsoft, of course, for Windows Phone going with a flat, minimal, non skeuomorphic look. But Android has had that look for a while now with the gel interface and, they, and then they had Holo. So they've had that minimal look for a while. But you could see just in terms of the overall look and feel, it's very simple, right? It's just white background, flat icons, nothing too fancy. Um, and of course, you can also click on the menu button here to get to that long press menu. So nothing fancy, nothing crazy, you know super nice looking or anything, just very simple, but what they're going for is a very fast, very fluid feel. That's the whole point of Cyanogen is to give your Android phone that fast feel that you don't get or that sometimes people complain about here with Android. All right, and again, moving around widgets, moving around icons, very fast. Okay, and, and just everything is just super fast, and I'm a big fan. Yeah, it's something that you can always go to XDA if you're having issues with Wi-Fi, you're having issues with, with data connection, just go to XDA, do a little bit of research, and you will be able to resolve any issue that you want, do a search. I'm sure any question that you have has already been answered, so if you do a search, you can definitely find out uh, or find an answer to whatever question it is you have. Of course, you can create folders here in the uh, doc as well, so everything is just blazing fast. Uh, and and I, I always emphasize on that. That's one of my things. If I have an Android phone or any phone for that matter, I want it to be fast. I want it to be the fastest phone on the market. Like I literally, that's my thing is I, I need a blazing fast phone. And I always optimize my Android phone to be as fast as possible because to me personally, that's what really makes these things true pocket PCs. It's just the it's same idea as having a, a, a PC or a computer uh, and wanting it to be fast. I mean, you don't want a computer from 15 years ago that's running all sluggish and slow. You want a computer that's fast, that's responsive, uh, that's it's literally does everything you need it to do without it crashing all the time. And that's my thing about Android is that uh, when I flash these custom ROMs, I make sure that they're stable and CM11 is stable. But aside from that, uh, I want to make sure that it's fast and that it just does what I need to do, boom, right off the bat without me having to constantly wait for loading times or you know pushing something and waiting for it to load for 10 seconds. I just wanted to immediately open the app and that's exactly what this does. And you can see the multitasking here. Okay. And of course, CM has the ability to just close everything out. Very smooth, man. Very just so super fast. And there's so many customizations, again, going back to the settings, that you literally, you'll have a field day with this thing. I mean, if you just go to the Play Store and download themes, uh, you could sit there for hours on end playing around with the themes. Okay, so basically that's everything I wanted to, I said okay, and Google now came up. And that's basically everything I wanted to cover here with the uh, LG Optimus G running KitKat 4.4.2, also CM11. They're nightly builds right now, but they're very stable. So I would definitely recommend um, downloading this ROM and flashing this ROM if you're looking for the latest and greatest. Uh, this is it right here, guys. Two gigs of RAM, you got a fantastic phone with the Optimus G. I would suggest looking into this. The process of uh, installing this is very easy. I'll post an article. Um, a link down below that'll basically take you to a technability.com article with all the links and everything that you guys need to install this on your Sprint Optimus G or your AT&T Optimus G. Otherwise, I am Bears. This is Technability. This is CM11 4.4.2 for the Optimus G. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We are your source for no-nonsense tech. Also, check out technability.com. All right, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.